My name is Camilla Studley and I was the um, project manager. So I will be doing part of the presentation. With me, I have one of the participating teachers from Intensive Core French, as we call it in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, and I have one of our research assistants. So the three of us will be sharing this uh, presentation today. Uh, and our research assistant is Kate Scarth. And our teacher is Paula Thomas. We had uh, numerous, oops, we had numerous partners in this project. Um, we had some assistance from the Center for uh, Distance Learning and Innovation. Uh, that's a division of the Department of Education in our province. We had cooperation from the Eastern School District and the Eastern School District allowed us to go into schools and work with teachers and students. And we uh, appreciate the uh, support from SHRC as well. The study focused on teacher practices, including their roles, their behaviors, and their beliefs, as well as activities that teachers might design to make the best use of information and communication technologies, ICTs, in the context of improving students' communication skills. The study was premised on second language acquisition theories, which argue that negotiation of meaning can lead to higher levels of syntactic and semantic processing. Negotiation occurs during breakdowns in communication when the learner tries to transmit a message but fails and has to try again. Noticing a problem pushes the learner to modify his or her output. I remember um, I was listening in in one of the sessions uh, where the students were participating online and they were playing a game, which I'll be referring to later, called Objet Mystère. And that's a, a little activity that the teachers designed in, in this project, where the students came online and they had in mind an Objet Mystère. And students in other schools had to ask questions to try to determine what this obje, Objet Mystère was. And one student uh, asked the question, Quelle est la taille de ton objet? And the other students who was, the student to whom that question was addressed said, uh, Je ne comprends pas. Le mot taille, qu'est-ce que c'est? So the student who asked the question, she, she, she rephrased the question to, to negotiate the meaning with, with the other student. She said, Est-ce que ton objet est petit, moyen, ou grand? And she took the, the uh, she used the whiteboard in Illuminate Live and she typed the words petit, moyen, and grand. The other student then could answer the question rather easily. So there was a negotiation of meaning. We looked at negotiation of meaning in this project. We chose intensive core French classes for this project because we thought that this type of study that we were doing would be easiest, easiest to do and most feasible with students in intensive core French. Their teachers were in their classrooms 65% of the day and had more flexibility and more control of their schedules so they could block out a period of time so that their students could go online and communicate with students in other schools. The study involved us uh, equipping four classrooms, which were geographically dispersed. We equipped them with four computers. We equipped them with internet access for the four computers, uh, the appropriate software for, uh, for the project. And um, we did this in the four intensive core French classrooms, and these are the actual photos taken off the classrooms as we equipped them. Um, they were, uh, in the project, they were using an intranet uh, to communicate with students in other schools and they were using virtual classroom software 
called Illuminate Live, which uh, I mentioned at the beginning, one of our partners was CDLI, the Center for Distance Learning and Innovation, and it was uh, CDLI that provided us with this uh, software. So the students were operating, they were communicating with students in another school, in a closed, they were not, uh, they were not subjected to open chat rooms, is what we were saying. This is a, a screenshot from Illuminate Live to show you the different um, uh, tools, communication tools, that the students could avail of. So they could use the whiteboard, which I just, in my, in my example of negotiation of meaning, the student wrote the three words, petit, moyen, grand, on the whiteboard. They could also, um, they could also communicate here using direct messaging. Uh, and these students in intensive core French in our province are 11 and 12 years old. Well, chat rooms and chatting is one of the things they do. So uh, that, that came quite natural to them. Uh, and we, we, if I was uh, a moderator, if I was just an, an observer, I could see what they were typing to each other. And they would try to use French, which was, which was great. Um, we also uh, used audio, of course. That, that's a foregone conclusion that if they signed in to participate in this project, they each had a microphone, each student was provided with a microphone, and they spoke to students in, uh, in other schools. Um, there is a feature in Illuminate Live that we used initially, which we stopped using after a while, and it's called uh, breakout rooms. So if we, have, if we had eight students here, then we could take two of them and put them out in a room separate. It was like breaking your students into groups, but you're doing it online. And in the first activity that the students did, we used breakout rooms, they asked each other's questions. I believe the first activity was je me présente, initially just to get the students uh, immersed into this Illuminate Live. And so what they had to do was go into a breakout room and find out some information about their partner, come back to the big room and present their, uh, present their partner. So these were the communication tools that the students used when they communicated online with each other. Um, most interactions between the teachers and the research team were asynchronous, meaning not same time. Uh, but we, we did build in face-to-face uh, -face meetings. As you can see, we had 2.5 days of face-to-face -face collaboration. Teachers were given a half day to respond to some questions that we, uh, that we provided, and they responded to that in a blog. I received 333 emails in our WebCT shell, and I received 805 emails outside of WebCT from the teachers throughout the first year of the project. We did create a website uh, for the project, and we will give you the URL for the site a little bit later in the project. Uh, and it's there, but we, ha we have a handout, we have a brochure to, to give you. Um, it was designed as much as to make others aware of the project as to support the activities of the project by serving as a portal and a gathering place. Here you can see a sample of one of the blog postings. Um, and the blog was used to observe and report on the Illuminate Live sessions. Every time the students were online, communicating, participating in an activity, all that was recorded. In addition, the teachers' responses in the blogs were, were saved. So all, this is the, the uh, data that was collected and was analyzed. Uh, we particularly focused on discussing best practices, solutions to challenges, presented by the sessions, and the benefits of improving students' communication skills using the Illuminate Live software. Uh, we had a total of 41 blog postings for the first year of the project. In the course of the first year, in addition to the f initial activity of just uh, a sort of a warm-up activity, we did uh, ac two other activities. Uh, the first one, je sais tout sur toi, and the second one, l'objet mystère, as I alluded to uh, a little while ago. 
In the middle there you see a picture of uh, one of our research assistants who moderated every session that the students were involved in. So she was online all the time. She organized the schedules of the teachers so that the students would, uh, would be online. Uh, for example, Paula's class would be online with another teacher's class and they would do these activities together. Our assistant Kim, our research assistant Kim, would make sure everything was happening the way it should. And she also posted blogs regarding what she observed during these sessions. At the end of the first year of the project, I visited each one of the four schools. I went in each class and did an objet mystère with all of them uh, live. Uh, I then interviewed each one of the teachers uh, and I interviewed all of the students uh, in pairs, two students at a time. And these were all recorded and analyzed. Um, I'll now pass on uh, to Paula to do her part. Paula is a teacher who participated in the project. Based on observations and analysis of the eLive sessions, analysis of the blog contents and of the interviews, we found that in the context of our study, the teacher needed to play the role of enabler. They needed to encourage decentralized control. They needed to encourage decentralized control and promote independence among students so that students are in charge of their own learning experiences. Teachers also need to set up pre and post activities. The types. Sorry. The types of activities that worked best in this context were those that involved competition and playing games, especially guessing games and socializing. Students really enjoyed using the multiple tools that were available, such as direct messaging and whiteboard, as Camilla referred to a few minutes ago. The activities were similar to those that we were doing in our regular core French class, intensive core French classroom. The eLive experience reinforced and built upon students' knowledge and gave them a chance to practice in authentic, uh, communicative contexts. Students really enjoy the anonymity that was associated with the online sessions as well. We identified several benefits with this type of learning environment. We found that the use of online synchronous communication promoted risk taking and independence when communicating in French. It built confidence and lowered the effective filter overall. As a teacher, it was quite rewarding to hear the buzz of uh, conversation going on at the computers of students speaking French, but especially for those students who are ve normally very hesitant about taking risks in large group settings. Students were very motivated and eager for their next turn on eLive. There were some challenges throughout the project, some pedagogical, logistical, and technical. Grouping was difficult because we could not rely on ways that we would traditionally group students if they were face-to-face -face and not online. Sometimes quiet students became quite talkative online. As for the privileges, initially we had not planned on using the other tools, direct messaging and um, the whiteboard, but we found that they supported communication well. Students did not always have the vocabulary needed to communicate. Scheduling was probably the biggest problem. Uh, disorientation related to the use of uh, breakout rooms, so as Camilla mentioned, we stopped using those. And uh, the technical problems were not too numerous, but they were more common in the beginning of the project. For each challenge, we identified possible solutions. We used flexible grouping. We used uh, vocabulary and pictorial supports and scaffolds. For example, in the uh, game L'Objet Mystère, the moderator would record clues that were identified as the game progressed. 
Students can then, could then refer to these visual representations to help them with their task of identifying the Aljamie stack. We encourage the use of direct messaging and whiteboard. We found that they facilitated and promoted communication well. We created a slideshow for each activity to make it easier for students to know what they had to do. These visual and audiovisual materials helped prepare students for the structure and progression of the various activities. And students could access these visuals as often as they needed to on our website. We stopped using breakout rooms and students no longer felt so disoriented. We experimented with more open scheduling and we created an audio slideshow to instruct students on how to improve sound quality. The slideshow helped to decrease the role of the teacher and other adults and put more responsibility into the, hand, the hands of students. We did not provide technical support. Rather, teachers were encouraged to make use of supports already available within our system. I'm now going to pass things over to the research assistant, Kate. Um, okay, so the presentation by Camilla and Paula focused on the first year of the study, but we actually continued the study into a second year, which was this past school year, 2007-2008. Um, so this year the, um, the research focus included not only communication, but sustainability and scalability as well. So we wanted to look at whether um, these activities um, could be continued without research and technical support, as well as whether um, other grade levels and other um, types of French courses could, be, um, could, could use this online syn synchronous communication. So um, with regards to preliminary um, findings for this year, we have um, been analyzing the data from the teacher reflection in the PV Wiki, which we've used this year instead of the blog, which Camilla mentioned. Um, and we've also been looking at the um, data from the teacher um, discussion forums in Desire to Learn, which replaced the WebCT from last year. However, we've been focusing um, particularly on the um, Illuminate Live sessions in which the students actually participated. Um, and so I've been, um, what we've developed an instrument to conduct a semi-structured analysis of the eLive sessions. And um, so for the structured part of the analysis, I've been looking for examples of negotiation of meaning that fall under or relate to um, certain categories, such as the use of direct messaging or the whiteboard to reinforce complement or um, supplement um, speech. So we're currently working on that, but we haven't finished the analysis yet. Now, actually... We are going to leave you today with a pamphlet which summarizes both the first and the second year of the project. Um, so I can just leave them out here. I don't know if there's enough for everyone, but you can certainly email Dr. Elizabeth Murphy, and um, she's the principal investigator, as we mentioned, of the project, and her contact information is on the back of the sheet, as is the URL for the project website. So on behalf of Camilla Studley, Paula Thomas, and Elizabeth Murphy, I'd like to thank you very much for attending our presentation today. <laughs>